Hello, I wish to present Strange Electronics. These little widgets are kind of interesting. So I was looking for one of these component testers a little while back and I was thinking to myself, why not get one where it's rechargeable by USB cable, has an internal battery. And I stumbled across this one, which is actually a component tester. And it also is apparently a digital oscilloscope. Insert somewhat shocked gaze here. So when you turn this on, it gives you two options. One of them is the typical component tester, which is telling me insert part, feed me. But either way, the more bizarre part of it is that it has this oscilloscope mode. And I wanted to address something that the manufacturer Fnord, let's just call them Fnord. Uh, yes, yeah, something that Fnord did not address, which is very important. So this, uh, this has two functions that are running right now. It has the oscilloscope and a PWM signal generator, which I don't remember if this is default or if I just left it set this way, but this is gonna become important in just a moment because a lot of the reviews with it say, well, it includes this standard oscilloscope probe, has a little adapter from BNC to, I believe this would be MCX. I'm not certain, but it has three input connectors on the top or two inputs and one output rather. The DSO port is the input. PWM is that signal generator output. And this one is used for a voltmeter function, which is really clunky and awkward. Uh, but the important part here is along with the bits that come with this probe, there's this little screwdriver bit and there's a little trimmer hole here in the probe. They did not in this incredibly useful manual mention how to set your probe compensation. And a lot of the reviews on this scope I find online have complaints about the fact that the user put in a square wave signal, did not get a square wave on screen. So let me set this up and see about how to compensate it. So this user interface is absolutely lovely. To select the highlighted parameter, just press OK about a zillion times until it rotates around to where you want it. And that includes these settings for PWM frequency and duty. But thankfully, there's also an auto set function. So let me just This is the most charmingly slow auto set I've ever seen. All right, so this is probably about what everyone is mentioning in the reviews because the compensation is not set correctly on this. To compensate it, all you have to do is grab that little screwdriver bit and dial it in until you get square wave. There's your square wave. So I think what people were running into was just the distortion caused by this not being set right and the instructions not telling you how to do it. So I've, I've done this with the, the probe is set to 10X attenuation, which usually if you, on these probes, if you set it to 1X, it's gonna look a lot different because it bypasses an attenuation resistor network in here. So I'm not actually sure if you can get the compensation dialed in with it on 1x. I've seen, well, that's interesting. I just press auto set and there it is. I, I don't know, uh, that's a little weird, but uh, considering the caliber of this instrument, it doesn't entirely 100% surprise me. There is one more thing on these where with no inputs connected, if you hold down this button, it brings up this calibration option and that I think is just setting the DC offset. So this, the scope went through and measured the DC offset in each of its attenuation ranges and applied a compensation for it in software. At least that's my best guess as to what it's doing. The component tester mode has a similar auto cal, which mainly seems to compensate for resistance and stray capacitance in the leads. But that scope calibration is really important if you wanna use it for anything other than like looking at a sine wave signal. And it will uh, it will definitely serve you a lot better if you set, set it that way. Now the same compensation procedure 
uh, for the probe works on pretty much every probe I've, I've worked with. Uh, the main difference being that most other scopes will actually have a dedicated calibration terminal somewhere on the front panel or on the side somewhere that you connect to. And that gives you a fixed one kilohertz square wave uh, that that's just designed so that you can use it as a handy source for it. And this, this probe also came with some other little interesting widgets, a couple of different insulated tips and colored markers, none of which make all that much sense when you're using a single channel scope, but hey, they're cool colors anyway. I like the lavender one, it's pretty. I wonder where the yellow one went. I could swear it had one at one point. I probably stole it and put it on another probe. But yeah, that's the, uh, that's the compensation you're gonna need for the little thing. And this back panel here is just a cool little stand that I constantly forget it has. So you can stand it up there and let the leads stick awkwardly out of the top. It's pretty cool. For, for about a uh, $50 tool, it's, uh, it's, I'm actually pretty impressed with it. It's more expensive than the little component testers are alone, but I think it's pretty nice just to have that, uh, just to have that goofy little scope for audio in it and the uh, ability to just recharge it and not have to mess with nine volt batteries.